Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So in our last video, we made mouse input happen. So now we know where our mouse is and we can register clicks. And currently we are writing out in the console where we clicked um, in screen coordinates. So that means we have everything we need to start making buttons, which we will do today. So the first thing that I want to talk about when it comes to that is if you look currently, we have this victory UI text here, and it's actually inside of another component, which is the UI container, uh, which currently is invisible. It has no color or a transparent color. But the position that we store inside of this UI text is relative. It's relative to its parent position. So if this position would be the actual position, like 349 to 87, which you can see down here, uh, but the UI text position would probably be something like five or whatever padding is inside of here. And that's not going to work for us because what we want to do is we want in the updates to check whether the mouse position is intersecting this hitbox, this bounds of this component. And since this is not relative, this is absolute, we need an absolute position. So let's fix that first. Let's find your UI package and let's find your UI component. And this position that we already have, let's shift F6 and rename that to relative position. And then let's duplicate it and name it absolute position. We are going to initialize it to something empty. And then let's generate some getters and setters. All right, so I'm happy about that. And then if you look inside the UI container, we have something called calculate position, and then we do calculate content position. And this is implemented by the implementing classes. So where we do set relative position, let's also do set absolute position. And what is the absolute position? It's actually the same as the relative position, but with the parent absolute position added. Int x, also add absolute position, in y. All right, and then let's do that in the vertical container as well. Duplicate it, set absolute position, and then let's add absolute position int x, and let's add absolute position int y. All right, now we have the absolute position, which is what we needed. So let's go ahead and make a package. I'm going to make a package called clickable, just because we're getting so many classes in this top package. So make a Java class. I'm going to call mine UI clickable. All right. And that will extend UI component. Let's implement them. And of course it should be abstract, <laughs> which means that we didn't need to implement this at all. However, we are going to use the update. So I guess that was okay. Uh, so some things that I want all of my clickable elements to be able to know whether they have focus. So let's make a Boolean has focus, whether the mouse is currently pressed, or rather if this element is pressed. And I think this might be it. So first of all, how are we going to know if we have focus? Now that we have our absolute position, it's not that hard. Let's actually start by making a helper function. Let's make a private and it's going to return. Is it going to return a Boolean or are we returning the actual bounds? Let's actually return the bounds. So it's going to give back a rectangle. Let's call it get bounds, return new rectangle. And we have the absolute position int x, absolute position int y, 
we have our size, get width, and our size, get height. All right, so here is our hitbox with all of the very handy helper functions. So now we need the mouse position. So let's ask our state for it. Let's say position, mouse, position. Let's also import position is equal to state get input and we don't have a getter for that so get mouse position we need to make that go into the state let's just go down alt insert make a getter for the input go back to the ui clickable now we have the mouse position so now we can say that has focus is equals to get bounds cont ooh, contains and you can use the point, but our position isn't a point, but you can also just use this that has the X and the Y. So let's use that. Let's use the mouse position dot int X and the mouse position dot int Y. So there we go. Now we know if uh, our mouse is hovering our element. And then to know whether we are pressing on this element is pressed. That is has focus must be true. We might be pressing, but if has focus isn't true, then we're not pressing this element. And also state get input is mouse pressed. All right, so those are the two things that we have, but then we also wanna know if um, has focus and state get input is mouse clicked. So we have clicked and we're also focusing on this element. Then I'm gonna say do on click. And alt enter, let's make a, an abstract method called on click. All right, I think I feel happy with this. Let's make our button. Let's make a UI button and add it. And this will extend the UI clickable. So we have an on click and we have a sprite. There are some more things that I want to do though. So when thinking about it, our containers aren't UI clickables, which means that I guess it could be, I'm just, I'm gonna do this instead. I'm gonna let this UI button sort of be a wrapper. It's gonna contain a couple of UI components. You're gonna see, you're gonna see what I mean. So actually I'm gonna make a con UI container, sorry, UI container, container, and then a UI text, which will be the label. So this will contain the label. These together will make up the button. We're also going to keep a runnable in here. And I'm using runnable because it's a very simple uh, functional interface and it's enough for what we need right now. And this will be actually, let's not call it runnable because that won't say very much. Let's call it click event. So this is actually the runnable is what's going to happen when we click on the button. And you'll see how that works in a bit. Let's make a constructor. And let's only use the click event. And first, let's do a string label. Uh, mm -mm. This is already called label. I don't want to. Oh, I guess it's fine. So this dot label is equal to a new UI text with the label. All right, so we've set the click event, we've set the label, we need to make the container new. I'm just gonna make it a vertical container, it doesn't really matter, it's only gonna contain one child. And we might wanna redo this at some point because the window size, we don't always have that. We can see what we can do about that later. So container, I'm gonna first of all add the this.label. All right, and is that it? That might be it. Awesome. 
Now, let's override the update method. Public void update, it takes a state. Let's just import that. All right, so remember to do super updates to get all of the good stuff. What I want to do now is I definitely want to update my container. And so currently, since this is a wrapper or the UI button isn't really, it's not really anything by itself. So right now it has its own size, but if you get that size, it will be zero. So we want this container to act as the UI button. So I'm going to just say that size is equal to container get size. There you go. And now to be able to also container gets bright. Look at that. Now to be able to uh, see some difference in our button, let's just say that make a color color and I'm going to make that color dot gray. So this will be the background on which the label will be on. So the button color, and we're going to set that to gray by default, but if ha has focus, right? If has focus, then we want that color to be color dot light gray. And if is pressed, well, then we want the color to be dark gray. So there you can get some visual cues on what is happening. And at the end of it all, we want to do container set background color color. All right. We also have the on click and we've sent in what's going to happen when we create the button. So just say click event run. All right, let's test this out. See where we are with this. I'm just going to go to the game state. And I'm just going to use the win container right now because we have it and it pops up in the middle of the screen automatically. So that's good. Instead of a UI text, I'm going to make a UI button. I'm going to give it a label. I'm going to call it button one. I know that's very inspired. And I'm just going to on click. I'm just going to say that it will display button one pressed. Whoop. And there we go. Let's try it out. And there you have it. This is a button and it is not currently working. And ooh, why is that? Okay, so here is what I actually forgot. Inside of the UI container uh, parent class, uh, we never set the absolute position. So for a container, the relative position is the same as the absolute position. So if you find the UI container class and the calculate position method, here's what you do. You also set the absolute position to a position of the same place. Otherwise, this will always be a position of zero, zero. And inside the implemented classes, when we set the absolute position of our child components, we're just going to add zero. So it basically had no effect, right? So that, what, that was what was missing. Now it should work better. Let's try it out. And it does. And sorry, this is just an output from uh, me trying to find out what was wrong. So let me just find system out print line. We're doing a lot of stuff right now. Here we go. Sorry about that. Now let's try it again. Okay, so now you have it. Here is the button. You can press it. You can tell when we're hovering, it is lighter. When we're pressing, it is dark. If we release, it says button one pressed. But if we press, then go outside and release, nothing happens. So this is working exactly the way that we want it to. Yay for us. So just gonna check. If we just give our parent container some background color, I'm gonna make it a dark gray. 
and I just duplicated this a couple of times, just gonna change to three, two, three. Here is what that looks like. So now you can see those five pixels that I was talking about earlier, which is the padding. So there you have it. Now you can create a little menu and that is awesome. However, one thing that will look a little weird now is if we have different lengths of this. So let's pretend we have something like, like menu and we have one called options and we have one called exit, which actually is very easy to implement. Let's just say system exit, give it zero as a status. But now you can see that the size is calculated by the content, so it looks a little weird, right? This looks a bit off, and I'd like to do something... Oh, look, the exit button worked. I'd like to do something uh, cool about that eventually, where maybe this can grow to the size of its parent, but for today, that's a bit much to do. But at the same time, I just want them to look a little bit better before I leave. So let's just implement something quickly called fixed size. And I'm just gonna do that inside of the UI container for now. Maybe we'll move this to the UI component eventually, but call it fixed size. So when we get the size, if fixed size isn't null, then we want to get fixed size. But otherwise, we want to get the new size. I think this is probably how you usually do that. All right, so if fixed size isn't null, then we are prioritizing um, the fixed size be our size. Otherwise, we're doing the calculated size. So just a quick fix, and we need a way to set that fixed size if we want to. So let's make a setter for the fixed size. And then inside the UI button, I'm just, for now, gonna say that this container, the buttons have a fixed size of, so first the width and then the height, I don't know, maybe 150 in width and possibly 30 in height. Let's just try that out, see what happens. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So maybe we'll keep expanding upon our UI system to make it a little more flexible in the future. But to move on, this will do. And having a fixed size is something that we probably will want to have in the future anyway. So there you have it. Now we have buttons. That's awesome. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Hey, Dwan.